What's up, guys? So I'm a little late on the gambling show, but they didn't have the odds up. Maybe it's because you guys cleaned house last week. Yes, we got Levi Kitchen at 10 to 1. Any hit. It was awesome. I got some other big ones for you this week. But remember to use the link in the description to create your account. That's how they take care of me, and I appreciate it. If you guys like pre-workout or energy drinks, stop drinking the normal garbage, that sugar-laced garbage that they have out there. Try Lightning Rod Energy. This is a healthy alternative. I have partnered with these guys, and if you go to Lightning Rod Energy and use code COOKSY, you get free shipping. They have a starter pack where you can just try six, but I'm telling you, this stuff has some different ingredients that some of these other ones chintz on. It's really good stuff, and I wouldn't partner with them if I didn't truly believe it was healthy. All right, guys, let's get into this and make you some money. You need people like me so you can point your fucking fingers I say, that's the bad guy. Let's start with the 250s. They got Hayden Deegan at minus 170, which is probably where they should have him. The way he rode there last year, the way he's looked this year, he's probably going to win. He might conserve a little bit just because of the championship, but that's not his style. I truly think Hayden's going to win. And if you want to make some money, I think it's a lock at minus 170. So I would put some money. You don't get really good odds. With Hayden Deegan, you got to bet a considerable amount because he is the favorite, but he should be. I did spot another mismatch. So sometimes these odds makers, they don't know this sport like we do. They have Tom Vial at 10 to 1. Now, is he going to win? Probably not. But Tom Vial, two-time GP champion, a guy who's been in the mix for wins all year. You're going to give me 10 to 1 on that guy? Yeah, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit on Tom Vial. And Joe Shimoda has looked really good as of late. I still don't think he's going to win. I like Tom at 10 to 1 better than Joe at 7.5 to 1. But if you sprinkled on Joe, I wouldn't be mad at that. What I wouldn't bet is Levi Kitchen at plus 350. Yes, he cashed last week at 10 to 1. And this is his home track. He can literally ride from his house to this track without loading up. But for some reason, he's not good here. He's better at East Coast tracks. That is one of the strangest things that I've seen in the sport in a long time. I wouldn't go for Levi Kitchen at three and a half to one. I don't think that's a good bet. I see him maybe getting a podium, but I don't see Levi Kitchen winning it at this race. Now let's take a look at some matchups. You got Levi Kitchen versus Tom Vial. For reasons I just explained, I'm going with Tom Vial. And you get plus odds on Tom Vial to finish ahead of Levi Kitchen. He's plus 135, so you'll get more than your money back, whereas Levi Kitchen is minus 175. You'd have better odds betting Deegan to win overall than you will for Levi to beat Tom Vial. This one's a fun one. It's interesting, and I honestly do not have a favorite in this. Triumph. Both Triumph guys are at minus 120. Dead even. That's as... That's literally even money, so you'll never get a even versus even because the house has to take their 20, and that's what's happening here. You got minus 120 on Savachi and minus 120 on Swole, and Savachi's been pretty good at this track in the past. He's not having as good a season as Jalik. I'm leaning towards Jalik, but it truly is. This one, that they nailed the odds right, so if you want to bet on this one, you're not getting any value in my opinion. You guys know, Swole, he's one of my favorites uh, ever since we had our conversations where he called me out and I love it. I, I love that he called me out. That takes a lot of character and for that I like Swole and I'm probably going to sprinkle a little bit of money on him. Now we've got Ty Masterpool versus Levi Kitchen. I love these teammate versus teammate battles because it is important. Both guys are on similar equipment and I think these are fun bets. Now Levi Kitchen is minus 160 and Ty Masterpool is plus 120. Neither guy has been historically great at this track but if you're going to give me what I see is a coin flip I'm going to probably take time master pool at plus 120 just because I get a little bit of benefit there. I'm not feeling real secure about that bet. Now let's take a look at the 450 matchups. We've got Hunter Lawrence versus Justin Cooper. Well, typically this seems like a no brainer to go with Hunter Lawrence. Hunter Lawrence is minus 250. That does not pay very good. That isn't even worth betting. What I like is Justin Cooper at plus 170. That's a good value for this matchup. Justin Cooper's been historically good at this track. Remember, he was going to win a couple years ago in the 250 class against Jet and Hunter, and he had that last lap crash. Justin Cooper doesn't have to worry about the scoop tire at this track because nobody's running it. So I'm going to go with Justin Cooper over Hunter Lawrence because I'm getting a value, not because I think that he's better at this track than, than Hunter. I think it's kind of a coin flip. 
But if you're going to give me a coin flip and then you're going to give me plus 170, I'm going to go with that guy. Then we've got Aaron Plessinger versus Jason Anderson. Now, typically I'm going to side with Plessinger and Plessinger's had a better season. I went back and checked the results at Washougal. Plessinger hasn't been great. I know he's had some good motos, but he hasn't typically been as fast. Anderson rides this track good. He's exceptionally well at Washougal. And it's really close odds. You've got Aaron Plessinger at minus 150, and you get Jason Anderson at plus 110. I like Jason Anderson at plus 110, and I'm going to put a little money on Anderson to win the race at Washougal outright. Chase Sexton is at minus 275. I don't like this. It's a bad bet. I just don't think that anytime you go three to one in the wrong direction, you have to bet so much money to win. And with Chase Sexton and his propensity to make mistakes, I'm not putting, I'm not laying money on him ever at minus 300 or so. I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to lay $3 to win $1. I'm just not going to do it. Hunter Lawrence plus 200. If you like Hunter Lawrence, that's that. I mean, if he's, he, he's in a must win situation, he wins this weekend. The championship's kind of already determined. It's already kind of Sexton's to lose. But if he has any chance whatsoever, he has got to win this race. So if you want to put, you know, put money on him at two to one, I kind of like it. What I really like is Jason Anderson at 10 to one. Jason Anderson feels comfortable at Washougal. He's exceptionally fast. He's finding his groove. He was a fast qualifier last week. And that's not typically a Jason Anderson type of track. This is, if he gets a whole shot, he very well could win. And if you're giving me 10 to one, I would say he's more like a five to one. He's not the favorite, but if you're giving me 10 to one, I got to sprinkle a little bit on that because, hey, like we saw last week with Levi Kitchen, sometimes these 10 to ones hit. Justin Cooper's seven to one. And that's probably about accurate. Uh, I wouldn't be mad at putting a little money on him. I might put a little on him just because, I mean, it's hard to stay away from a seven to one when I think that a guy is just, because I think Justin Cooper can beat Hunter straight up. So all that, all that I need at that point is for him to beat Anderson and Sexton to have a mistake. If those things happen, it could, it could play out. So if you sprinkle a little bit there, like I said, most likely Sexton's going to win this race. But if you want to have some fun and get some long shots, they put some big ones on there. If you like Plessinger, I don't. And they have him at 14 to one. Man, that is a lot. Like for a guy who's been on the podium this year and almost won motos to get at 14 to one, uh, I don't know. I almost want to put some money on it, even though it's in my mind more of a 10 to one. But you're giving me, man, when they, when they make it that attractive, it's hard to lay off. And that's what they do when they're gambling. And I know a lot of the viewers are not for gambling, and that's fine. I respect that. If anyone has any gambling issues, there is uh, gambling help in the description. I have Gamblers Anonymous and some other ways that you can seek help. Do not bet your family. Do not bet rent. Do not bet things that you cannot afford. I have fun with this. I bet very small amounts of money, five, ten dollars that I can afford to lose. And that's the only way you should bet is if you can afford to lose that money, expendable cash, stuff that you would spend on something that you didn't need. If you're using money that you need for day-to-day -day things, I think you're doing the wrong thing and I don't think you should gamble. But if you're having fun with it and you enjoy it, like I do, keep gambling, use the link, create that account. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are curious what happened to the presidential odds after this last week. Going into the week, Trump was a minus 170 favorite. Then we had the big attempt. Now he's even better. He's at minus 210. The big difference we saw this week is Joe Biden is pretty much out. Joe Biden is 12 to 1. What's interesting is Kamala Harris is now 3 to 1. I don't know if these gamblers know something I don't, but I think it's pretty obvious that Joe Biden won't be there come election day. I have thought that Michelle Obama was going to be tabbed to replace Biden for the longest time. Apparently she does not want that and she's kind of fighting that. And, and after doing another show with the BS Free podcast, which you might want to check out, I'll put a link to it in the description. They explained to me how campaign finance works and it's so much easier to just move that money to Kamala than it would be to finance Michelle Obama. So for that reason, I wouldn't take Michelle Obama 18 to one if you're gambling. Like I said, just for fun, I want to throw those odds up there. I'm not betting. I don't know. I don't feel good about betting on our presidential election. I feel like it's our future that we're all gambling anyway, but I just wanted to share it with you because it's interesting to me. Thanks guys. Remember, get your lightning rod energy. Use code COOKSY for free shipping. Good luck this weekend, guys.